right. All right. Hello. Okay, well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming here today. I'd especially like to thank God, my Lord and Savior, my family, my agent, Mr. Don Pagnotti, twin sister and manager, Cece. My lady, thank you guys for all your support. I'd also like to thank all the fans um, and all the people out there who consider themselves an FOF, a friend of free. My free agency has been nothing short of amazing. And frankly, it has been a dream come true. But like most dreams, the reality is very different from what I imagined. Though I wouldn't change a thing about this period and the time I spent in the NBA, I can honestly say that nothing has been more gratifying and more difficult than choosing where to play next year. I sought the wise counsel of my loved ones. Nothing puts me at ease more than knowing that regardless of my decision, you guys will be there for me no matter what. Now, there are so many wonderful teams in the league, each field with stellar talent and all vying to be number one. For me, there's nothing more important than winning and surrounding myself with those who feel just as passionately about the game as I do and have an unrelenting desire to win a championship ring. That's what matters most to me. It is for this reason, above all, I've decided to choose the Portland Trail Blazers. Yeah! 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 they have on that team. They go in the championship this year. You think so? <laughs> you know what that means? I'm gonna get you. Cha -ching. <laughs> I love it. I know. Hey, hey, hey. Yo, fool, where you been? I've been trying to call you. Mr. Freak. Yo, who's this? This is Officer Vasquez with the 9th Precinct. Officer Vasquez? What the Vic do now? Mr. Freak, there's been an accident. Look, we're gonna need you to come down to the following address as soon as possible. What kind of accident? Put Vic on the phone. I can't do that, sir. No, 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 you're not hearing me. I want to talk to Vic. Look, sir, we need you to calm down as soon as you can. No, 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 hey, hey, hey listen, listen, on? listen, listen, listen. Put down the phone, and I don't want to hear it get picked up until Victor Van Leer is on the give phone. Me the phone. Put Vic on the phone. Mr. Freak, Mr. Van Leer was killed in a car accident. What's going on? Give me the phone. The car he was driving was registered to you. We were able no. to identify him from the flyers. Listen to me. Session. Freak, give I don't want to talk to you no more. Freak, give me the phone. <sighs> hi, excuse me, hi, yes. This is Cece. This is Freak's manager. Who am I speaking with? Hey, yes, look, we're going to need somebody to come down and identify Mr. Van Leer. Uh, eyewitnesses say that he was involved in a car chase. Two cars were chasing him, and as the chase escalated, he eventually lost control and crashed. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss. Hello. Outside of the deceased, was anybody else injured? Vic died in a car accident. What? Yeah, they said he was in a car chase. Please, no. Freak, Are I'm you sorry. Sure? He died. Oh. I'm, so, I'm so sorry, Freak. Freak, I am so sorry. <laughs> Sis, I all started here. Yep, right here in the dome. Yeah, and I was all about living the dream. Yeah. I know it'd be some nightmares. As Daddy always says, all that glitters ain't gold. Yeah, I'm gonna miss my brother Vic, though. 
Deep down, he was a good person at heart, but he was never quite right. Something was always off with him, yeah. even when we were little growing up. Yeah, I know, I know, but I loved him anyway. I knew he was trying to take advantage of our friendship, but I didn't care. We were boys, ride or die, you know that? Ride or die. Just hope Vic finally found peace and death that he never found in life. Well, may he rest in power. <laughs> when you really sit down and think about it, life is like the length of a blink of an eye, and that's for so sure quick. We spend a third sleeping in bed, a third trying to figure this thing called life out. <laughs> Yo, by the time we think you got it all figured out, you only got a third of your life left. Yeah, life's a trip. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Life's a trip. Ten times ten. My oh, honey. <laughs> hey, yo, shout out to my man, Vic. <laughs> shout out to Vic. <laughs> Come on, let's bounce. All right. Yeah, I'm about to wake up the project like I used you to. Better remember? not. <laughs> you better not. We ain't kids no more. CC? CC. Hey! Why are you sneaking up on us? Hey, we thought you two left town yesterday oh, after the funeral. Here, <laughs> we decided to stay one more day. Oh, hey. I'm so glad you did. I wish we had known you were coming. We would have made you something to eat. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> what y'all doing? Yeah, hey, chatting. Yeah, talking about yesterday's service. Oh, okay. How you holding up, son? You know what? I'm okay, pops. But you know what? We love you two so much. And it's only now that I'm realizing how much you two sacrificed for Cece and myself. Hey, you, you know Vic didn't really get to know his father growing up. And we were lucky to grow up in a household with two loving parents. Uh, and you know what's sad to say? Like, people thought we had a highly unusual home in the projects. Yeah, folks always talk about the negative effects of boys with no father in the home, but it affects girls too. And it's helped me in my relationships with men in my life. What men? Anywho, I know that all men are not dogs because I had a great father in the home. You, Daddy? I was there, too. He didn't do it alone now. <laughs> yes, right. Mama, of course. <laughs> that goes without saying. Thank you, daughter. I did what my father did, and his father, and his father before that. A man, a real man, will always be involved in his children's lives. I love your mother. We had our ups and downs. But I love her more than life itself. You two are a direct result of that true love. Yeah, we know that. Switching subjects. Yeah. I know the both of you like I know the back of my hand. You said you were leaving after the service. Why are you here out of the blue? Yeah, what's up? Why I gotta be all that? Yeah, we can't stop by and show our love and appreciation for right. our loving parents. I'm highly offended. I am appalled. Uh, what's happening? Yeah, come clean. <sighs> OK, OK. Me and Cece just want to give you a little present. Yeah, a small token, a small repayment for everything you've done for yeah, us. Yeah, all the sacrifices you've made. And we want nothing in return but your love mm -hmm. and grandchildren. Uh, but get married first. <laughs> yeah, save your money. But, Daddy, we really just... But, wish Daddy, nothing. You heard your father. Well, maybe, maybe one day. day. <laughs> maybe. But one day is not today. Nope. <laughs> OK. Well, for real, for real, we do have an actual flight to catch tonight. For real this time? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. for real this time. <laughs> well, it's so, good to see you again. Uh, yes, love you too. Hey, I'll call us when you get there, OK? Well, we will. As soon as you yeah, land. Yeah, OK, Mama. All right. Yeah, you all okay, call mama. us as soon as you get back. All right, as soon as you land. All right, yes, promise, promise. Take care of your brother. Of course, always. I got this. Don't trust. <laughs> wow. Hey, did you forget something? Uh, no, can you do me a favor and head to the sofa? The sofa? Well, what's at the sofa? Just look behind the cushion. Behind the cushion? Uh, Pete, come here. But they won't now. What's in the envelope? Just look inside, Mama. Pete, you open it. Hey, Frequency, what's this? Does it look like it opens doors? Keys to a house? Uh-huh. A new home? Uh-huh. Son, now I didn't told you and your sister a million times. Me and your mother mm -hmm. are very comfortable yes, right where we are. Yes, he's absolutely right. This yeah. is Harlem, USA. Project or no project, this is our apartment. This is the home we made for you to raise you up right in. We're not moving like everybody mm -hmm. else. Let me talk Tell to Tell them something. Frequency, we both appreciate it very much. I mean, we, we're very uh, grateful. OK, okay can, look, there's something else in the envelope. He, he says look inside the envelope. What? Well, look inside. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey. Montego Bay, Jamaica. <gasps> Baby, pack your bags. We are living the dream. <laughs> oh. Thank y'all. Love you. All right. Love you guys. Love you. They're freaky. <laughs>
By the time you read this letter, I'll be long gone. I wrote this letter because it's the only way I think my voice will ever be heard. This piece of yellow paper is the only way I'll ever get any of you to stop, listen, and really get to know me, Victor Van Leer. My childhood was turbulent. But even in the most unsettling times, there was a break in the tide. My father was the rocky water, and my mom's was the gentle surf. Pops did a lot of foolish stuff, but when he wasn't trashed and was actually taking the time to be a father, he'd say, Vic, you got one life, a fragile life. God can take this life whenever he sees fit, so live and live plentifully. Each day God gives, live it in abundance. My pops was a smart dude, the most dangerous kind, educated and street smart. And this apple didn't fall too far from the tree. My mom's, yo, she was an angel. No matter how heavy the hand, she would do anything for me. And by chance, when I was casted into that darkness, she was the voice I followed back to the light. I was so young, too young. But my decaying flesh carries the scars and memories that won't fade. She's the reason I'm as loving as I was. She taught me to look at others as human beings and not objects. Now, where there's pain, a simple kiss, hug, or I love you could disperse that rainy day. That's why I'll, that's why I'll never understand why. Why? Why she of all people was taken from me. The only one good thing I ever had in my life and that was my mother. You ever feel lonely? Well, I didn't have any siblings. And no one would claim me as their own. It is the first time in my life I even... I question the point of living at all. If it wasn't for your family taking me in, I swear... I was going to open my wrist or jump in front of the A train. But I found love. And I found it through my new family. Mr. P, man, he was the complete opposite of who my dad was. He was foreign to me. He was a good, honorable man. And to be honest, he intimidated me. I didn't believe I could ever be the man he tried teaching me to be. Miss Martha, damn. <laughs> Real talk, I was in love with that woman. Freak, if you're reading this right now, I'm sorry. I never met one hottie that came close to her. Mr. Peter's a lucky dude. But unlike my dad, he could recognize the angel in his presence. Aside from my own mom, She's the only other person I truly think understood me. I just wanted to be loved, yo. I just wanted to belong. CC, man, I've seen her make the hardest dudes break at the wrist. I've seen her turn coal into diamonds and then back into coal again, just by doing this intense stare she do. CC is no joke. I love her, though. We used to be close. And again, I'm sorry, freak, but when your sister get all mad and on one, damn, I just, whew. Cece, I love you more than you will ever know. I hope in my time past, you can finally forgive me. Yvette is beautiful. A woman about success, work ethic, and never settling for less which that's why I didn't stand a chance. Freak was...